David R. here. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, You Have the Right to Remain Innocent by James Dewan. And it's subtitled, What Police Officers Tell Their Children About the Fifth Amendment. I like this little book, and I also like the author. The author is a fast-talking lawyer. He's highly intelligent, and he also has a video that went viral called Don't Talk to Police. The book opens with a quote, and it reads, Any lawyer worth his salt will tell the suspect in no uncertain terms to make no statement to the police under any circumstances. And this was written by Robert Jackson, former U.S. Attorney General and Supreme Court Justice. So you might want to listen to that guy. I say that uh, in order to remain free in American society, we have to know our rights. We have to read books like these because we don't live in a free country. The deck is stacked against us. Between 2000 and 2007, Congress created a law every single week. The author says that it would take 30 years to read through all the laws on the books. And you still wouldn't get through all of them because um, there are several hundred that the government won't let us see. Now, think about that. They won't let us see the laws? Why is that? Well... It's a control mechanism. We could be breaking the law, and I'm sure I am breaking the law right now because we all commit three felonies per day. Anyway, I say that uh, we live in what's called an overcriminalized society. Think about it. Anything can pretty much land you in prison. In a system of an assembly line of arrests, there's no wonder that 25% of those exonerated by DNA evidence, made false confessions to police. So the author says, don't talk to cops. That's what cops tell their children. Don't talk to cops. Don't let them search your home or your car. And when government officials or cops happen to be in the hot seat, they're under investigation. What do you think they do? Well, they uh, they don't talk. They lawyer up. But they have made a living out of talking us out of our rights and every other person. But when it comes to them, they know what to do. So we have to do the same. I say that the criminal justice system preys on ignorance, but it also preys on kindness. You know, maybe cops say, come down to the station so we can clear this thing up. So out of kindness, you may go to the station. And what do you get when you go there? Well, it's it's not good. Have you ever seen those shows like the first 48? They get people in the interrogation room and soon enough, this guy's confessing. But why? Why would you confess? Even if you did it, why would you confess? Uh, I don't know. He says that cops will lie and tell you that talking to them will help your situation. You know, like on cop shows like Law and Order or something like that. They get the suspect in there and they're like, I'm only trying to help you. Cops don't help anybody. They're they're arresting machines. That's how they make their living. There are no legal oversights on police interrogations. It's just whatever they want to do. They can lie to you. They can trick you. They can do whatever they want to get you to talk. He says, only give cops your name and why you are in a particular place or doing whatever you're doing at the present moment. Never, ever answer questions concerning what you did in the past, even if it's just 20, 30 minutes ago. He says, memorize this. Who are you? What are you doing right here, right now? So cop asks you, who are you? You answer. What are you doing right here, right now? Answer. But if they say, what were you doing 20 minutes ago? I cannot answer that question. That's what you do. He says the problem with cops is that they're human. They're not perfect. And they operate within a criminal justice system that isn't perfect. Cops also suffer from what's called confirmation bias, meaning that when they come to a conclusion about something, it's hard to get them to admit that 
Maybe they made a mistake, especially after they arrested somebody. He says that people talk to cops all the time, but it's a no-win situation. Though they may try to help the cops, they're not helping themselves. He says that if you're interrogated for three hours and you give 300 statements, 297 of those statements are you professing your innocence. The three where you implicate yourself will be used against you. That's why you have to be very careful. He says that if you make an honest mistake, like you say, this is messed up, the cop, in his mind, through his ear, heard you say, I messed up, and he writes that in his notes, then in his eyes you confessed. You could go to prison for his mistake, and you never confessed at all. He, they could even add some words later to the report that implicates you. So the author states that you want to plead the Sixth Amendment, not the Fifth. And there's a reason for that. The uh, Fifth Amendment is no person shall be compelled in any criminal circumstance to be a witness against him or himself or herself. The Sixth Amendment states that it, it guarantees the rights of a criminal defendant, including the right um, to a, like a speedy trial and um, the right to an attorney. He says that um, clients used to be urged to plead the fifth until Justice Scalia, a former Supreme Court justice, said that innocent people don't need to plead the fifth. Only guilty people do. So now the author says, plead the sixth. Say you want a lawyer. And that's all you need to do. Because if you just remain quiet and you don't say anything that can be used against you as uh, evidence of guilt. And he talks about that in this book. There's a, there's a case where somebody didn't talk at all and uh, that proved that they were guilty. <laughs> Think about that. Jeez. So you have, to, you have to actually say, I want a lawyer. You have to say those words. If you don't say those words, those exact words, you have to say those exact words, I want a lawyer. If you don't, then cops will continue questioning you. If you, if you say, I think I want a lawyer, or I think I need a lawyer, or maybe I need a lawyer, or maybe I want a lawyer, you don't say those words. You say, I want a lawyer, and that's all you need to do. So I suggest that you get this book, read it a dozen times, and get yourself one of these as well, U.S. Constitution. Know your rights, because uh, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to the law. All right, that's all I got. Talk to you later. Bye.